Hello everyone and welcome back to the next lecture of control systems. In this presentation, we are going to discuss the transfer function. So, let's get started. The transfer function is an important parameter of an LTI system. Like impulse response, we use the transfer function to define the LTI system. We will first see the definition of transfer function. The transfer function is the ratio of Laplace transform of output to the Laplace transform of input when all the initial conditions are assumed to be zero. This point, all the initial conditions are assumed to be zero is a very, very important point. We cannot define the transfer function without assuming the initial conditions to be zero. And it is because we define the transfer function for LTI system. And in case of LTI systems, all the initial conditions are zero. We have discussed the reason in the previous lecture. If the initial conditions are not zero, then the system will not be a linear system and hence the system will not be LTI. That's why to define the transfer function, all the initial conditions are assumed to be zero. Now suppose we are having a system, which is of course an LTI system and its impulse response is HT. We are giving an input XT to the system and its response is YT. Now we all know that yt is equal to the convolution of these two functions. So we can write yt is equal to xt convolution with ht. And from the convolution property, we know that the convolution in time domain is the multiplication in frequency domain. So by convolution property, we can write y of s is equal to x of s multiplied with h of s, where ys is the Laplace transform of yt xs is the Laplace transform of xt and hs is the Laplace transform of ht. Now from this equation, if I take the ratio of y of s to x of s, then we will have h of s is equal to y of s over x of s. And this is the transfer function of this system. Now here we have defined the transfer function for this system and we know this system is an LTI system. So by default, in this case, the initial conditions are equal to zero. But if we define the transfer function for an arbitrary system, then in that case, the initial conditions must be equal to zero. And to understand this in a better manner, we will take one example. We can also notice that HS is the Laplace transform of HT. So we can say that the transfer function for any LTI system is the Laplace transform of the impulse response of that LTI system. Suppose we are given the transfer function of an LTI system and we are asked to calculate the impulse response, then we can calculate it easily by taking the inverse Laplace transform of HS. We are going to solve many such questions in the upcoming lectures. So now we are done with the introduction of transfer function. Let's take one example to understand it in a better manner. And the example is given as, find the transfer function of the system given by d square yt over dt square plus 3 multiplied dyt over dt plus 2 yt is equal to xt, where xt is the input and yt is the output. So we are given a system which is defined by this differential equation, where xt is the input to that system and yt is the output. And we need to calculate the transfer function. And we know the transfer function is the Laplace transform of output to the Laplace transform of input. Now moving on to the solution, if we take the Laplace transform on both the sides, then the Laplace transform of d square yt over dt square by time differentiation property is given as s square ys minus y0 minus minus y dash 0 minus. Similarly, the Laplace transform of dyt over dt will be sys minus y of 0 minus and it is multiplied with 3, so by homogeneity principle, 3 will be multiplied in the Laplace transform also. Similarly, the Laplace transform of 2yt is 2ys, and now the Laplace transform of xt is equal to xs. And in this way, we have converted this differential equation to its Laplace domain. And now we need to define the transfer function. But remember, to define the transfer function, the initial conditions of the system must be equal to 0. So the initial condition terms in this equation must be equal to zero. So if we put these three terms equal to zero, we will have s square multiplied y s plus three multiplied s multiplied y s plus two multiplied y s is equal to x s. 
Now we have y s common on the left hand side. So taking y of s as common, we will get y of s multiplied s square plus 3s plus 2 is equal to x s. Now if we take the ratio y s to x s, we will get y of s over x of s is equal to 1 over s square plus 3s plus 2. Also, if we factorize this, we will get s plus 1 multiplied s plus 2. So the transfer function of this system is given as h of s is equal to 1 over s plus 1 multiplied s plus 2. And in this way, we have calculated the transfer function for this system. And now we are done with this lecture. We will take some more problems on transfer function in the upcoming lectures. Thank you for watching this lecture. I'll end this lecture here. See you in the next one.